Today we're going to talk about molding foam. Specifically today we have a three pound per cubic foot molding foam that uh, we want to discuss some of its attributes. This material starts its life off as thin liquids. It's going to be mixed at a one-to-one -one volume measurement and then it's going to expand. It's going to expand to form a very lightweight foam. And as we said in this case, it's a three pound per cubic foot density foam. So it's going to expand 24 times its liquid volume to create a lightweight, non-absorbing, closed cell foam that can be easily sanded or carved to dimensional shape. It can be cast as backups or as free, fence, free standing forms. It can be painted with automotive paint and used in conjunction with fiberglass resins. In conjunction, it can be used for flotation. It has a extremely good compressive strength. This particular three pound foam has 40 pounds per square foot per square inch compressive strength so it'll support a human walking on it. But also it's good down to depths of about 300 foot in the water. To demonstrate how this liquid foam is, is going to actually be mixed and used, we first conditioned our liquids to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the best temperature to be at. Hotter means fast reaction. Colder means a slower reaction is going to create higher density foam than desired. We're going to measure out equal portions in liquid. In this case we've had some pre-marked beakers. We measure out part B, and now we're going to measure out part A. And then we're going to take a flat spatula, not a round dowel, and we're going to pour one into the other and we're going to simply mix. And it's important that you quickly scrape the sides and the bottom of the uh, container to incorporate all the A and the B so that they get fully reacted. It doesn't take much. When the material starts to react, it will form a nice even cream color and you need to pour that into your mold. For this demonstration, we're just going to do a free rise uh, block of foam so that you can actually see how this material expands. So we'll uh, pretty well got it mixed and it's going to create just a little bit of heat on its own. Again, 72 degrees is the perfect temperature to start mixing that. It gives you about a minute or so of time to actually mix the foam and pour it into the mold. You got to be careful now not to put too much foam into a, a closed cavity mold because it does create quite a bit of pressure on its own and it could warp your mold. So now it's starting to come up and actually to demonstrate this we're just going to let it come up to kind of show you what we call free rise in this. So it comes out, it's going to expand and within about two or three minutes it's going to get to be full hardness and we'll be able to actually pick this up, carve it and show you how it's, it's used. It's best not to get this on your hands and I'm not wearing gloves but you should wear gloves with this right now because it loves to stick to human hands. That's about it. And you can see I only had about 500 milliliters of liquid but you can get a sense of how much volume with this. Now foam is sold in different densities from very, very well lightweight packaging foam, which is about three quarters of a pound per cubic foot density, all the way up to heavy furniture foams, which can be as high as 15 to 20 pounds per cubic foot. And every time they go up in density, the carvability and the machinability goes up to it as well. And you can see, this is already forming a nice solid. And within a few more minutes, I'll be able to pick this up and actually carve it for you. Well, it's only been about five minutes since we initially mixed our foam and you can see it's pretty well set. It doesn't stick to polyethylene or propylene plastic, so common garbage bags work quite well as a barrier. But you can see it's durable and it's fairly lightweight. And as we mentioned earlier, it's easy to carve. It can be carved and sanded. The integrity of the foam gets better the more that the liquids are mixed before they're poured into a mold. It's always best to start working on the foam when it's really cooled off. We can certainly trim it and sand it within about five minutes, but really about 20, 30 minutes you would like to have it so you can have it cool off just a little bit so it's easier to come out of your mold. And we're going to show you how to use a mold here in the next few minutes. So we're going to show you how to fill a mold. Today we've selected a silicone rubber mold. Some of the best things to make urethane molds out of is silicone rubber because it doesn't require a release agent. So the part, once it's pulled out, can be easily stained or painted. However, urethane foam can be molded in a large variety of shapes and types of molds. So it doesn't necessarily have to be silicone. So in this case, we've chosen a uh, finial, and you can see the detail in this. So we've already pre-measured out 
the uh, liquid foam. And as we mentioned before, it's three pounds per cubic foot is what it's going to end up. But however, we're going to compress it in here. You want to compress the foam, back pressure the foam, so it'll move into all the surface detail. So the foam is actually going to be pressurized up to probably about a four or five pound per cubic foot density. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix the liquids. And you're going to have to use your best judgment of how many, how much uh, the volume of the mold is compared to how much of the foam that you're going to put in here. And so we've kind of given our best educated guess here. And we're going to mix this material until it starts to get an even cream color. And it's going to generate just a little bit of heat. And before it starts to foam, we want to go ahead and pour it into, pour it into the foam, into the, uh, the mold. And sometimes it's easier to slosh it around to kind of get a good even coat. Okay. Put a little bit more in there. Now it's always going to fill up a little bit more than what we need. And we've kind of a back pressure plate that we put a, a silicone release on, or even like Johnson's Paste Floor Wax works real good so that it doesn't bond to it. We're going to use this to back pressure it. The foam is coming up. And as it kind of gets to the top, I'm going to lay my back pressure piece on and I'm going to allow it to come out the sides. So I'm going to hold a little bit of pressure on this. And you can see it rolls out. And as you work a mold, you can become more skilled at uh, how much to load the mold. So in this case, uh, we could use probably a little bit less foam and be a little better off. But you don't want to underload the mold because you end up with voids in the face of the piece. So we're going to hold this until the expansion's over. And then we can let it go. And then we're going to let the foam cool off just a little bit. And then we'll remove the part and show you what that's like. Well, it's been about 10 minutes since we poured our three pound foam into our silicone mold. And we've it's time to take it out. So we've trimmed up the outside. And so we're going to go ahead and pull this out of the mold. It should take a little bit of struggling to get it out. And there you have it. Really a nice piece. Every detail, every nuance has uh, been recorded in the piece. And now all I have to do is trim up the sides and the back to get this ready for a production piece. Molding foam is a fantastic material. As we mentioned earlier, it can be used as a flotation device or as a filler as well. In this case, the customer wanted to create the actual float itself with no coating out of the three pound foam. And you can see it came out very nicely. Now the foam should, if it's being exposed to UV light, it should be coated with uh, a urethane coating or acrylic coating to give it better UV resistance, but it has excellent resistance long term to salt water and fresh water, much more than EPS or what you guys know as styrofoam. In other cases, it's with cavity filling. This is a rotationally molded piece where the urethane foam was actually molded inside a skin, and that forms a real nice protective barrier. In the art world, Many times the foam is used as a back filler. In this case, this is a large statue. They wanted to cut down weight because it was going to be hung on the side of a building. And the three pound foam poured into it and rotated around the skin formed an excellent structural enhancer on that. So you can see that it could be used for uh, back filling in that case. 